by looming famine in Nigeria. Army headquarters confirm explosion in Ikeja cantonment. Police deputy commissioner found dead in Obumosho. Obi Flay's use of 10 trillion to service on productive debt says 97.3 trillion debt worrisome, dangerous to the economy. Outrage trails Israel's killing of aid workers in Gaza. So I have the major headline. A government suspected to be armed headsmen attacked the Adija community in upper local government area of Benue State on Easter Sunday and killed innocent villagers. Um, someone who didn't want to be mentioned said that uh, the vict um, talked about the victimization and he said, told them Daily Sun that about five persons were killed in the attack. And also speaking to newsmen in Makodi, the chairman of Development Association, uh, Barrister Eche Aboko, also confirmed the attack. And he said it's true. He can confirm it authoritatively. And three bodies have been found so far that this is more like a routine attack that has been happening in the state. The attack communities, you know, youths are missing as, you know, he was, you know, narrating what really happened. And they were only able to have recovered three bodies, two are yet to be found. That they don't know those who were actually killed or if they were just missing. And that the attack has, is disheartening. That arms men come here every time to kill people and go without any form of challenge. And it's alarming that the government isn't doing so much to stop it. And he went ahead to advise the uh, residents of the area to try as much as possible to protect themselves. That these people come in on the, almost on a daily basis. They kill the men, they rape the women, they harass the children, they kidnap them, and all of that. Somehow, they have to find a way to begin to defend themselves while they wait for the you know, uh, government to do something about it. What other stories do we have in Daily Sun? Okay, go ahead. Sure, Kasha. So, according to the registrar of JAM, um, Dr. Isaac Oloye, the professor Isaac Oloye, the, my apologies, he said that if they discovered 1,665 fake advanced level results during this direct entry uh, registration process that is ongoing. And he was saying this to the National Association of Nigerian Colleges of Education students in his office when they visited. So he said that fake results of about 397 were from colleges of education, 453 from the university diplomas, and the rest <coughs> from other A-level certificates around. He said the... JAM as an institution has taken measures to safeguard the integrity of the certificates mm -hmm. that you know people are bringing to JAM for DE. But the institutions now should also ensure that the certificates um, candidates are Bring. presenting on from their schools mm -hmm. are also verified. Mm -hmm. He said he, he made a particular mention of the Bio University. He said they had about um, 148 direct entry applicants from that school. Only six have yeah. genuine, genuine. Mm. Genuine. 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 genuine out of all the DE results wow. uh, that they, um, they brought in so he says that JAM is putting together a tax force for A-level verification and that um, the since they are will are boycotting JAM level. so JAM is still going to go yes. and ensure that they he said, so the, there's a new policy of no admission no verification, no admission mm. Mm. Yes, well, exactly. but I think that's, that's better Yeah. Well, let me quickly take the story yeah. of um, so the Nigerian army had to quickly do a press release to assuage the fears because of the history. This is, there was an explosion on Monday at the Keja cantonment. Mm -hmm. And because of that explosion, people, there was a bit of pandemonium. It happened close to the Mami market, but they said it, you know, it didn't happen within the, it happened on a farmland mm -hmm. within the cantonment. It was a result of um, burning bush that led to an explosion. It, because this just very it recently... Be <laughs> it wasn't Amory. It very recently was certified that there was no... Um, right. There was no dispo, um, um, on explosives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just certified that they don't have um, explosives that could be dangerous. So having this happen just after the certificate was issued, the army had to officially come out to say there was not. There's nothing to worry about. It was just burning bush that oh, wow. led to a minor, very minor explosion. There was no casualty. No oh, was injured in any way. It was just the bush and the noise, so the bush will calm down. There's nothing to worry about, and this is because we also have a history of what happened in the country many few years back. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, lady. That, that's all we can take on the newspaper reviews. When we come back, we move on to our hot topic. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Enjoy the delicious creamy goodness of cowbells. With Vitarich and Vitamin B9, which supports brain development. Cowbell, so creamy, so good. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to confront it and all through persistence. We discover the power within us to overcome any challenge. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Thanks for staying with us. The Ogun State Police Command has urged ladies to be cautious of the dangers associated with hookup with strangers. According to them, avoid being a victim of ritual killing, hookup, and its dangers. You may go and never return. Girls, wake up. Young girls, do you know who you are being hooked up to? That person may exchange your beautiful head for peanuts. All that glitters is no gold. What are your thoughts on this? So we saw that, uh, you know, warning, more like a warning to young girls out there. And I think this, um, it's high time this warning comes. And I believe that we all need to be talking about this. Because I've seen like a trend where because of the things people now desire, the materialistic way of life, everybody wants to own certain things. Nobody wants to work hard anymore. Nobody wants to wait their turn to get those things. And you hear girls saying, ah, I cannot stress. So there was a video sometime that went viral where a girl was uh, saying that I'd rather marry a Yahoo boy than marry somebody who has a decent job. I, I, after all, I would be able to buy this, that, that, and that. And it's become like a trend, especially with our young people, where they don't care as long as I make the money. They end just the means as long as i'm able to get that cash from that person and so they jump into cars they hook up they get you know connections just to hang out with people they don't know based off of what they will be getting and now this advice is coming that be careful though before you go in and then you don't come out with your head what are your thoughts on this who's ready to go okay so this is a mother's advice to a child mm. and then we will first our police to have to do this, maybe because they are seeing how many people walk or in their metro news, the kind of matters they handle. They are seeing that, you know, young girls just want to have things, young boys just want to quickly have it. Nobody wants to work hard and Anymore. wait. There's no need to persevere, just have, just arrive. And so they are now parenting the populace. This sort of advice is the advice your elders give to you. And our elders are saying, you, you know, see your mates. So mm. they are forced to now parent society. It's, sad. Um, it's a very sad world that we have gotten here. I didn't expect the police to 
make this their business fully like this, but we have gotten here. And they have to uh, speak and I, They have to, because parents no longer speak up. Elders no longer talk to young ones. People, you know, they, this is the business of your grandmother, your mother, mm. the people your around aunties. you. Your aunties. Your who are seeing you in the, hurry, in the hurry to arrive, who are supposed to be telling you, take it easy. You get there. You know, do the right thing. Take your time. Learn your trade. Build your business. Little by little, you get there. Patience. But they are the ones now pressuring you. And you call a young girl in school and ask her, your mommy has not eaten since morning. What do you mm. want the girl to do? You know, right? We have switched roles and to not take up parenting rules. Hey. Rama too? Yeah, so this hookup thing, eh, I think is very common. It's not really common in the north. We don't really, it's not, we marry early. That's just one mm -hmm. thing. And you know, we are always betrothed. Like we already have somebody that we want to marry. You know, my place, we marry our cousins. Mm -hmm. know. So I would say we deal more with early marriage. Like girls, you see a girl getting married at the age of 12, 13, she does her first period at home. The next period is expected that she's going to do it in her husband's house. Yeah. I'm telling you, no matter how young she is. So we are dealing with that, mm. first of all. I know of, um, I, I have a friend that, I was in SS2 then. There's this elderly man that stays, that used to stay with us then. He had a daughter. And the girl was, um, she just finished her primary school education. And then there's this guy that wanted to get married to her. He has three wives. She was going to go and be the fourth wife. Oh. He married her. And then when he married her, um, she was, you know, every time she always goes out to go and play with her. Because she's a child. She goes out to go and play, you know, all That's these, uh, hair and all with her friends. He came and he was complaining to the dad that, ah, what kind of girl is that? That she doesn't sit down at home to, you know, um, make meals and all of that. She's always outside playing and all. And one day I had to tell him that you married a child. So you should expect those kind of things, play. You, know, you know? So what now happened was that she took in, she got pregnant. And when she got pregnant, of course her pelvic was very narrow. Oh. So when she tried giving birth, you know, she had this popular thing that happens, VVF. Yes. She started leaking and all of that. All of a sudden, he now started complaining. He said, mm, ah, that that she's smelling, girl. she smells and all. So he is not interested. He doesn't mm. want the marriage again, mm. you know, and all. And that's how he let, he let her go. Wow. And she left with that. And uh, she gave birth to the child. But of course, she was leaking everything. Her life, yeah. That's yeah, a yeah, child to take care life. of another child. Mm -hmm. So you see, hookup is not even the major mm -hmm. decision. No, no. <laughs> yeah. So area. we already have, you know, mm -hmm. other issues. That's and even, and even more serious yeah. issue. But, but, but for hookup, I think it's um, lack of contentment. I think mm -hmm. women, uh, girls should try and be contented with what they have. Mm -hmm. I know. And then is we should not to look down on... in this world? Is it easy? It was easier in our time. Was but it easy? It wasn't, it wasn't easy. It was easier yeah. in our time. Was, so um, yes, so it's interesting to hear another perspective. <laughs> it's, interesting, it's interesting to hear that the problem... Each, each, each malam with the ketu. Different colors, different true. size. Um, it, right here in the southwest, we do have a major challenge with hookup. I can even extend it towards the south-south. We've seen the problem of where a lady, there's a, you know, there was a video from Port Harcourt where the boy was with a wheelbarrow with butchered parts of his girlfriend. Hi. And both yes. of them yes. are students. So both of you are students, but the boy is big, the boy does... The, um, he, the, the boy is, has his skits. He, he does skits. That's the official one. But you know, he was going to. He was trying to use her for money rituals. Money ritual. wow. He has his way of making money. He has a front for it. But then he has his way of making money. His girlfriend. Both of them are students. He butchered the girlfriend. So what we're talk, what we're seeing now is a level of you must become paranoid as a girl. Every every young girl must become paranoid. If a man says, "Come to my house, <laughs> auntie, just carry." You, you will carry two babes and send the address up front to your family and friends mm -hmm. and let the man know that I'm, I'm, um, when I, whenever I go out, I send address of where I'm going to to my yeah. family and friends. My phone has um, contact tracing. So if wherever I am, people know where I am. Whenever I, once I'm with my phone, 
There are little things. Technology can help us with that. And you too, use common sense. You don't know somebody before. They tell you to come and meet them at 9 p.m. somewhere because the person wants to buy you latest iPhone or latest Samsung. You want to be holding folds when your life is not straight. I don't even understand what my mentor says. He says you want to wear both straight when your life is not straight. straight. <laughs> you now, and because of that, you end up getting into a case where your life is in danger. We have lost too many young girls due to hookup, what should have been a normal relationship has now turned into money rituals, ritual killings, body parts being harvested, mm -hmm. organ harvesting taking place. Yeah. And when they are organ, or doing organ harvest, I don't know. Somehow it is women's organ that is more akachi it's for them to harvest. Whichever way, women should become wise. Yeah, Whether you are action. young or not, become wise. Mm. Never ever go and meet a man you don't know or a man you don't have, you, are, you don't trust enough without having other people know where you are going to. Everybody must know that so I'm going somewhere. Yeah. But let's yeah. take this call. I think we have a call on the line. Good morning. Obi Kennedy from Jalingo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great topic you are discussing today. Thank you. Uh, we, we've, we've come a long way into this country as long as we are alive. But this hookup of a thing is... It's evil. And let me be very, very specific. There's no shortcut to being get or, or to getting rich. A whole lot of this evil is happening in within the system of I know you and you know me. Some even go to the extent of you don't know somebody, somebody will just call you and give you somebody's number and address. You've never seen him. You don't know if it's a gorilla or a lion or a cheetah. You just go there just to make money. There is no shortcut to richness. And this thing is not only happening to the young ladies, to the, to the elder ones, it happens. We just have to be very, very careful and be very prayerful, especially to the younger generations. What are we teaching the younger ones to come? It's just prayers, and we have to be very sincere to ourselves. What is happening in this country or in this world is different. It's only God that will save us. Thank you, and you have a very great topic today. God bless you all. So much, sir. Yeah, so I, I'm just um, afraid because, like Nima rightly said from the beginning, we are, the, the children are not expected to raise the adults who are supposed to know better. You know, back in the day, and somebody will ask me, how old are you? Again, they already ask you, you to, every day you say, back in the day, back in the day, in our time, in our time, how old are you? But it was back in the day, yeah. looking at what is happening right now. Yes, it so. seems like it was another generation, generation entirely. <laughs> entirely. But we knew that parents took up their role which was to preserve their children's innocence for as long as they could. And that meant that when you come home with anything they did not buy for you, they will ask you where you got it from. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know better than to bring any top home or any jean home that your parents did not buy for you. But the reverse is the case. And even at that time, in our time, there were some homes that the reverse was the case. Mm. Because those parents were not on ground to provide the basics for their children. So they allowed their children do the work for them and cater to them because of poverty and more, lack of morals as far as I'm concerned. Because even if you don't have much to give to your children, you should give them at least, strive to give them the basics. Mm. If you need to carry it, well, well, carry it. If you need to sell in the market, sell. You don't sit at home and say, hey, we are poor, we are poor. You go outside and hustle. So you give back to these children, you expect them to hustle. How dare you challenge them when they come with cars and you know that they are not working? You won't challenge them because they are already doing the job that you are supposed to do as their parents. And so we must go back to the root cause of, you know, some of these things and how society has enabled people who have certain amount of things without proper questioning. We accept it. We jubilate with them. We embrace it. We shame other people. They shame you on social media when you dress a certain way. Yeah. They shame you on social media that you're wearing rubber on your hair. You cannot even afford human hair. It's rubber you're wearing. They shame you. That's the society we find ourselves. So how can we be content? How can these young girls be content in a society that is not content and doesn't care? Sadly, we are very materialistic now. But then, even then, it used to be. It used to be that, um, you know, a man will want to get you. And the first thing we try to do is, you know, use material things mm -hmm. to get you. You too, you might le most likely fall for it. Maybe because you have a check at home who is asking you, eh, eh, what does he do for a living? You don't ask her. They chop money. They, you, you know, because of those checks. Topa was saying um, 
Don't go to somebody you don't know. Even the one you know now is a risk. Hey, I'm telling you even now. the one you know that you are you grew up with, the one you eat with, mm -hmm. you should be careful about. The most important thing is that we should raise our children to have their own goals. Mm -hmm. And it should not be dependent on the on the money that somebody would give to them. It should be dependent on within the means. I remember I used to get a thousand naira a week back then in the university. Inside is my transport, inside is my food. But I was a big girl because how much is the food you want to eat? <laughs> a bottle of soft drink then maybe was less than 100 naira. I would just buy one snack and big guest status on celebrate because I would not ask any other person for, for food. And that 1,000, I did my job from there. And mm. made, yes, I did, my, I, I did that job from there. I continued to finance my businesses back then in school. My parents needed to see traces, so traces must be proven. Mm. My job card was at home, mm. so they will see it when I pack it. I will say, okay, it's now money don't come to join. You know, you just needed to show cause, show traces. And if you're parenting a child now, it's not abnormal when a relative asks the child, hey, where did you get this? They should it's ask, not abnormal. Actually. They should ask. And if you are not responsible for it and you don't know where it's from, you should be ashamed. Mm. It's not busybody for your neighbor to ask your girl, where are you going? Or why are you that coming thing. late? Mm. I once a accosted a young girl who had a party at a hotel at 21st birthday. Shinek. And the mom was like, what is my business? What, what is wrong with you? Ah. I was like, what's wrong with your father's house? Why didn't you just tweak the... No, it's the, 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 I, need, I need fine background for pictures. Said, who, who, where did you get money for the... Party. So it wasn't the parents that were yes, funding it. I was digging too much. Oh. They were all offended. Ah, and so wow. I learned to shut up my mouth. Oh, wow. And they put the pictures, they brought the pictures, printed and put it in the house. Chineke. Uh, it, didn't, it's not, it was <laughs> impossible in my mother's house. Let's take this call, Samuel from Joss. Good morning, Samuel. Hello, good morning. Uh, I'd like you just for this minute. You see, is what you see in the society today starts from family level. Uh, uh, there is no society without a um, uh, family. It's, I've always, uh, always advocated that you bring your children uh, in the mosque. Say a prayer, say a word of advice, like a Christian I am. You, you feed them with the word of God. You feed them with the word of morality. You feed them with the what they should know and what they shouldn't know. You should feed them with what they do and the what they should do. With that, as they go out into this wider society, they will say, this is what my father, this is what my mother has told me not to do. Mm. This is what the word of God, which is the most, the, the most important book in the world. So we shouldn't just allow children, like I, I, I observed uh, three weeks ago, I saw my daughter with, uh, I think, a bag or so. I asked her, how come? She now told me it is her friend, and they, they come together with the friend at home. So if you buy your child a biro, it is true that they use biro in, the, in their classes. When they call, if it is not the color you bought for them, ask them, but I bought you blue color. How come you are coming home with your red color? They should explain. <laughs> and when they explain, you verify. Go for that and verify. You verify that actually this is the source of what they are coming home with. Don't just allow them. They come home with all sorts of uh, uh, gadgets. You don't ask questions. How do you think they will not go, uh, graduate into doing a, a greater than the worst thing? Hmm. So uh, let me uh, conclude by saying, parents, please, it goes on us all yeah. to make sure that our children go with it in the fear of God. Thank you and thank you. Again. Thank you so much, Samuel. Is mm -hmm. they are not even, it's not even just um, um, through hookup and all. Okay, did you hear of that story, that particular story of a girl that just went to do makeup for somebody and then the brother, you know, carried her and the brother wanted to make money with her, you know, brutalized mm. her and then buried her at the back of the house. It was the mother that was calling, trying to find out where she was. And, but fortunately, the girl told the mom before leaving the house we that I am someone. going to so, so so person's house. That's her very good friend. Mm. He's a very good friend's brother that did that to her. Mm. And also, at the end of the day, we need to know why do girls indulge in these things? Some of them is not just material stuff. They're mm. not after material. Some is just the adventure, just for fun. Mm. You know, the fun of it and all. So we need to know their friends, the kind of friends that they keep. That they keep and they move around with. Yeah. So there's an age that... Let, let's, let's pause uh, on the conversation. When we come back, we'll continue. Stay with us.
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. I where you need to have the break time. Every morning is an opportunity to take your hustle to the next level. Every morning is one day closer to your ambition. So, make every morning count. Cup after cup, morning after morning. Start strong, finish strong. Nescafe. Helping your wife. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. Welcome back. We're still having this conversation, you know, and the warning that was given to young girls who would uh, rather hook up for the material things that they want to be very careful or else they may lose their heads as well. That's okay. We're ready to go. So, um, Ramat, what Ramatu said brings me to parenting. Immediately she was talking, I just said about that parenting, like everything we've said, parenting and the, and the environment around Bam. how we're raising our children. Mm -hmm. Because as we're discussing this discussion now, that's simple that it, does not, it, it doesn't even cross their mind to think about this thing. They are not in the category, hook up, not even near their mind. Mm -hmm. Why? Their environment, their parents, yeah. the upbringing they have wow. has already dealt with these issues. They will not fall into <clears throat> these traps because of their upbringing. As, 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 as a society, we need to take up parenting more. And the parenting is not because, oh, one person, like what Nima said, that, oh, she kept quiet, but she's, at least she spoke up which is important. You might speak up and they do not agree. In your conscience, you will know you spoke up. Who mm -hmm. knows? Maybe that speaking up you spoke up would prevent her from doing mm -hmm. something else in future. She will remember what Auntie Nima said, mm -hmm. even though her mom did not take it. We must stop this idea of thinking, it's not my business, and not be my picking. It's not, you, you see somebody working, I've, I've said this before, I, I had a, <laughs> my first boyfriend, um, lives not so close to our area, like I really went really, really far, but still <coughs> within a mood of female too. Is my mommy's friend <laughs> that I called my mom. <laughs> I told my mom that Tope is so, in a man's house. In a man's <laughs> house. <laughs> and when my mom came, the way my mom, uh, that she knows there's a neighbor. She said, ah, but you live here. It's impossible mm. for you not to have seen my daughter come here. Mm. I don't a good friend. Mm. You're not a good friend because the person that gave me this information lives like few far. blocks hmm. away. But you live opposite and you've seen her and you did not. How many mm. children do I have? Mm. You will now be watching my... So that communal raising is so important. There Very are things you will see. I, I cannot see. My son is... But that's why I, I would like my son to visit my friend's place because my son will do something at home I did not notice. Mm. My friend will say, ah, what your son is doing is bad though. And you will pull the boy's ear mm. and you will correct him. Mm. That way all of us are who are raising this ch the children together they are getting from antinema getting from anti bc getting from at the end of the day they they grow up more <coughs> more equipped to deal with the challenges life of life at them mm. because at the, at the children like, we are raising nowadays they are so gaming play play focused that we are not equipping them for the vicious world mm. they are going to enter into and the world is life. vicious mm. people will talk I, I was 16 when a 36 year old man was toasting me hi ah, when I, was, I said, you are over twice my age. He said, no, what's there? 16. I, can, I, I couldn't just rationalize it. When I got to my, I told my mom, my mom was like, hey, I am going to go to his office. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many children do I have? You know <laughs> that you want to corrupt to my only daughter. You know, but we need to understand that our children are facing those kind of, mm. those kind of people that will tempt them. Mm. You might not be able to afford the latest phone. 
You got them one small palasa. Their eyes entering the big phone, which is normal. And somebody tells them that, ah, if you meet me, uh, in this place I'm taking you to, this party, everybody's living with the latest iPhone. Mm. And they will gather them in a bus and go to the place. You have to. It is what you put inside that child that will help the child to survive when the danger comes up. And how you prepare the child from inside to know what to do, how to relate. Um, what Amato said, please tell him. I said it earlier, tell everybody. Somebody must know where you are. Yeah. At no point will you feel that you are sneaking, that nobody will know how to catch or where you are. Your mommy will be able to call your dad. Your, your dad can call, your friends can call. You are in school, but you have, you have found your way in Abuja. Your school is in... Lagos, you have found your way somewhere else, and nobody knows where you how you got to Abuja. Uh, Stop, uh, it was God that saved us. Let's, 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 now, let's not be talking you. like no, which new from my school. I will go to Pataka to do a beauty ah, okay. pageant. Nobody, in fact, my father will see me in the newspaper. I think it's the social media. See me in the newspaper in the morning. I'm like, ah, it's busy. I'm supposed to be in school. <laughs> Let me take this call. I'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a call on the line. Ijoma from the UK. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, um, I would like to contribute to, to, to this question. Um, what's going on right now is really scary, um, and it just mirrors what the society is embracing, sort of, at the moment. And it's interesting that Ogun State is calling out, you know, is coming out with this sort of advice. Because recently I was watching a documentary and it did say that Ogo State is almost ranking one of the highest states with high crime rates. And it's, it's good that they are coming up with this advice because now students are, mm, sorry, now ladies or young girls are being victimized. They are, they are at risk of things happening to them. So. It's very important that we start thinking, what are the solutions? What can we do to protect these ladies? You know, what, what can the government do? What, as individuals, what can we do? Then I, I like the fact that you guys have touched on parenting, you've touched on... Um, again, I think it has to do with people trying to belong to a certain class, you know. Which is not necessary. The content is whatever you have. You know, train them. Train them. Oh, sorry, we lost the German, but she was making some really valid yeah. points. So I was giving a story saying that uh, God just saved us at the time because um, there's no way you can stop young people from exploring, right? But if you give them the foundation and you give them the basics, Somehow, you know, like the scripture says, train up a child in the way you should go, and when they grow, they will never you depart from it. For yes, no, no, no. I was going for work, for what I believed in was my life at the time and what I wanted to use my natural talents to do. But the fact that I would live without telling my parents was because my parents did not allow me to do that. Mm -hmm. ah, ah, you're supposed to be in school, why are you modeling? You know, so I used my agidi to travel, <laughs> I would be in Abuja, I would be in Port Harcourt, I would be in Benin. In fact, I taught almost all the states in Joss. Mm, we we met when we were yeah. going to Joss and all of that. You know, I taught almost all the states for what I believed was what I really wanted to do, right? But the, the, the point I'm trying to raise here is I still didn't tell my parents. They didn't know my whereabouts, though some of my friends who know in school that were going for this competition and that competition, and somehow God saved us, right? And we have young people out there who want to explore. Mm. How do you stop them from exploring? So let's not um, deviate from what we're addressing. Mm -hmm. That's so not we're, we're addressing the mm -hmm. cop. Mm -hmm. No, I know that one is a different and issue. The, and, the, and the materialistic end of it. Thank mm -hmm. you. you know, so you just wanted to push a career. Maybe you didn't get the support at home. I went for admission seeking by myself to a learning for the first time. I traveled on my own for the first time. And my parents were, they, they, we had, I had no address to arrive at in Ilori. Mm -hmm. I dragged my bag and got to learn. I asked for the mosque. I slept. I did not know Amata in Ilori is different from Amata in Lagos. I, was <laughs> I went on my own. I told my parents, I need this admission. I want to do combined mm -hmm. honors. I mean, they, they have it in Ilori. Fortunately, when I go, Koki, me come back. They decided it in last, so I took the option. Mm. So we did certain things, but yeah. it was towards your dream, mm. not, not towards any end. Yes. I didn't get there and say, okay, where's the person that toasted me in the bus? So yeah, I, I was already married when I was at the airport. 
I on my way to law school, I had um, extra luggage. You know, law school, we used to carry our load. And I saw somebody that was traveling with just a suit bag. I said, okay, please, please, it's your luggage. So I did measurement to it. And the guy accepted. My husband was standing somewhere there and waved bye-bye. We landed at Abuja. He gave me phone number. He came to law school to find me. So if it is, if, if, it does, if that's your training, mm. I, I mean, Abuja and Ashabi, my husband is here. Everybody will sort of themselves. But that's not your, that's not your goal. So yeah, yeah. let's address this, this culture of let's do hookup. But yeah. Sokwe touched something re really cl close to me because Miriam mentioned it, that we've lost the help that we had from communal raising. As yeah. parents, we've lost that help because we don't know it all. It takes that uh, busybody anti uh, anti uh -huh. mm. to let some mothers know that ah this wakadi speaking the wakadi uh -huh. because uh -huh. yes you see this thing recently I met one woman not recently about four years ago I met one woman on my drive home and she called I wanted to buy a bottle of water she said ah how is your mom she looked at me in the eye and said how is your mom then she called my mom a particular name and you just knew she was in my past. So I, I took the water and said, ah, your own name, because she told me, I went, to, I just parked by the corner. I called my mom, that somebody, this person said, I should greet you. He said, ah, is that woman, no, that saved me. That time that you were following this boy up and down, I used to go to their house. She used to tell me all the work. Ah, I went back. I knelt down, I greeted her and said, mm. thank you. And I went, because I didn't work anyhow, work, but my mom had monitoring spirits. Yes, yeah, she knew where you <laughs> were. This were monitors, she, because the way they usually give you the gist at home, when you come back, you say, hey, wait till you go find for Jerry that time. <laughs> So I went to bed and he said, lie. They saw you making calls. So you, know, you needed those communal yeah. help. You don't know it all as it is. How do we get back there? But yeah, let, but let's call this busy call. Busy. Pastor yeah. Cyril yeah. from Patakot. Good morning, Pastor Cyril. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good morning, sir. All right. Uh, first of all, let me appreciate you for this uh, wonderful topic today. Uh, it's a very significant one, uh, more especially in the times that we are. I have been listening and following up, and um, I just want to add my voice to what um, um, one of the one of the hosts said there about you know having time that is just God that saves us, you know, uh, or save you know um, them during their secondary school or university days where you just need to explore. You leave the school and uh, you go to do some modeling in Portacourt or Abuja and the rest of that. Yes, that's very fundamental. What I want to say is um, freedom is governed by law. Mm. We must teach our children to exercise their freedom and their liberty. But true freedom is governed by law. Mm. The burden of responsibility is to be free. Mm. And uh, that's freedom comes by ensuring that they understand what it takes to be free. Um, let me put it in a, um, a, a proper perspective. Let's take, for instance, um, we have laws governing traffic, you know, uh, in Nigeria. If you drive against traffic, you'll be arrested. Yeah. And that means that you have contravened the law, you've gone against the law. But as long as you keep the law, you are free. And once we don't teach them what is right and wrong and allow them to uh, make their choices in exercising their freedom, we will also be caging their potential, their ability, you know, and um, the true sense in finding themselves or discovering themselves. So freedom helps every one of us to, you know, help every one of us to understand the journey to self-discovery, but it must be governed by law. So the most important thing I want to nail here is that parents should teach the law of freedom to their wards and their children. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. Mm. Governed by law. Parents. Yeah, parents should teach. Always mothers. Mm. Even the mm. fathers too. Mm. Have to Thank come you. And also try and talk to their kids as well. Mm. And you know, this most, I think this whole thing things, it's a business. There are some women that it's just their business. They bring in girls from the villages, you know, they bring them in uh, for hookups and all. They just keep so them... So those ones, they call them prostitution now. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm trying to understand the difference now. Yeah, because Hookup then, you just, know, there's so a certain area where you have so them. there's prostitution. Okay. There's ronsge. Okay. Then there's hookup. There's hookup. So, hook up, they say, is a softer way of prostitution. Yes. But we know it's prostitution. Mm. So, 
It's your it's friend. Ah, yeah. Nima. Yes. I'm so sexy. You know the street. Yeah, the street. Forget it. There's no language they are using. Yeah, that. I, I don't know. know. I'm telling you. I grew up in the United States. <laughs> if you use any language, street talk, disguise any rubbish. I will catch you. So the hookup is where they get you. you. So it was on this come? show. I learned what hookup. Okay, I was telling Top Boy that is not when they when they when those. So it's your connect friend you asking your, you yes. to join her on a gig. Yes. But oh. at the end of that gig boy. is a sexual act that you, you should and not they, disclose to money. You. Oh. But, Who do they now pay? So you can actually go out with the person and they don't have sex. They give you money. Mm. But you know that if they if the sex if was they required for it, yeah. and use of substances was required, you would do it. So that's hookup. Hookup is so she now gets a percentage. Yeah, all no, of you get no, money. No. So, uh, uh, these yeah. these friends, so they always it's we just, we just hang out with them for uh, in this party this and, and they will sort us. Mm. So you oh. you are going to hook up. You are following the person that has the connect to hook up. Because it's Ross girl I know. And yeah. then the old the Ross girl she chests it with her herself. Mm. She has a client base and says, her. I'm going for runs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going for runs. She's not going for any legitimate runs. Mm. Uh, work. She's going for runs. Yeah. 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 But the prostitute is the one that I like. This, on this, on the one that I'm saying that a woman yeah. recruits girls, mm -hmm. takes girls from that, 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 that is the madam. That's the madam of prostitution. Yes. Mm. Yes. No, 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 no. She can be ring leader for the runs. They call is madam. She'll be connecting them to better, better clients. Yes. That's still that's prostitution. What the police is addressing is hook up. It is where you hear of a financial gain and you go to a place you have no leverage, no idea. You are working innocently without even, you don't even know where. In most cases, hook up, you don't know where you are going to. It is the friend that knows where you are going to that is taking you there because there is hope of profit. It's like you, you, you come back home and you are in your, most of the time it's students that this happens to. Your, your friend just unlocks a new phone or brings out a new bag. You'll be like, I want you to go, ah, I went to a place last to week. The they have another one next week. Don't Follow worry, me. I will. Hey. I will take you there. That's how the person just goes. Hey, I remember so, one, yes. So, I, I, those things happened. I, I was in Yabate, Kakata, you, they will come outside. You, hey. you, they will go. Me, I'll I did cover not you. do, yes, I did not do follow follow i know they do follow follow it's dangerous, so. my my work i was a model i was modeling mm -hmm. i was going for auditions and that was my even as a makeup artist there was a time that i was caught in a situation and i was just praying to god that god i am Deliver working me. hard for mm -hmm. my money this i did not come here many, this, i did not come here for nonsense this is not what i'm here for and god always shows up so when you say it is god bc god knows in our hearts yeah. that we did not go god there protected for, us so. yes god god secured Travel. us from situations where Anything could have happened in yeah. those situations yes. as well. So it's important that people differentiate and are aware. Don't do follow follow because of benefits. Those mm. benefits, somebody is giving you these things. I'm begging. What will you what do? do you with think? This? What do you? Why is 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 the person Father Christmas? Is the person Father Christmas? Why you know? Is the person running a charity organization and the charity is to give you money and phone and sh as in like some is just ah when I went there they gave us they just gave us one thousand dollar. They just give us five hundred dollars. Just like that. Just like that. I heard ah, all those. You should though. be extremely careful mm. when people are offering you monetary and gifts mm. um, and um, mm. financial gifts in exchange for nothing on the face value. Yeah. Something else is going. I to like happen. where we're going, but let's take a short break now. When we come back, we'll talk about how we can train our young people to ward off some of these pressures mm. when it comes because that's how some of us survived we saw all these things we saw people collecting one thousand dollar five hundred dollar and we, we saw people like, mm -hmm. in fact we saw people that they bought cars for mm. you know but yeah. somehow we, we were not interested yeah. yeah how do we raise our young people in that direction let's go on this break now we'll be right back stay tuned your view will be right back It's like every doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked, and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century speaking advocating protesting as the arts are meant to be
Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities. Have their friends tricking them into the bad things. We are talking about full adults who think right. it's okay, it's a side way to just get side change mm. yeah. to quickly amass your latest phones and amass your things. Girls who are above 18 and they don't actually need parents at a, a permission. So be, they are taking the decision. So it's taking us out of the parents. What I'm saying. Just as one caller said, the quality of individual that your parents have yes. raised as a young girl yeah. is what you need. So when I left secondary school, I had this group of Before friends. Before this, your story, because I want to hear it in full. Let's take Saliso from Joss. Good Salisu. morning, Saliso. Hello, good morning, Professor Obiagelu. Good morning, sir. <laughs> yeah, interesting topic, and I always follow your program. Thank and you, the sir. word of uh, confession is that your program is very addictive. I don't go oh. out until after 11, oh, after wow. finishing your program. Thank so you, this sir. particular topic in hand, like I live in, in the corner, just to be precise, the problem I see it more as an elitist problem, because the moment some of us decide now to involve our family members into the upkeep of our children, the later the problem. In the note, like I am personally having a regret. I build my house, move out of the family compound. Oh. And my children are having a sort of what I feel more sense of freedom being uh, separated from the family house. If I have been I'm in the family house, any problem that is beyond my reach, my brothers will not just, we'll handle I it. don't need to invite them, they will jump in. The moment they hear any of my child misbehaving to me, so it's a automatic ticket to come and correct that particular mm -hmm. issue. Okay. So now you see a situation whereby parents will even have to go to, go to school and challenge teachers, teachers because of the discipline of their children. Mm. So the moment you do that, or like the Yoruba style, whereby if somebody disciplines your child, you go and appreciate him. You will have the man to do it again. But the moment you build that defense that your child is only you, you are the, the only, all in all. Nobody will be a of, and that is why this is a cumulative of building of this kind of problem that will lead to this kind of rubbish, the hook of that we are hearing. <laughs> it's happening in other places, but it's less pronounced in the north. Because the system we run in the north is that a child is not solely your responsibility, is the collective responsibility of the, of the society. A, a neighbor song in particular... Hello? Can hear you, go Hello. ahead. 
a case at hand. The, in my community now, I have a neighbor son that is always so much fun of playing football. And I'm particular about that particular boy because he is the first child of the father. I make it a duty whereby if I see him that in his excessive uh, pastime of football, I always caution, caution him. Warn him that I will go through his books and see his performance. Why? Because that child, if that child turned out to be good, it's not for the father alone, it's even for me. So the moment we get ourselves involved in the collective of people of our students, the better. Thank you, Salisu. Thank you so much. Yes, you were telling So I was sharing the story of how friends would usually, you know, try to put you into this business. I had two friends who would just come, see your face, see your skin, see your lips. As you find. As you find. Mm. You go like, go party. So I was like, ah, what's the party? What's the cash? She said, ah, if you just go, just one party that you go, you can get a bill of 50,000. Ah, carry the matter. I thought about it for two weeks before I could even talk to my mom about it. My mind was go to the party, but my parents would never approve. Mm -hmm. So go to the party, <coughs> find a lie. I thought of all the lies in the book. But because of the kind of upbringing I had, I did not, none of the lie gel. And then it will be that period that my father would choose a verse of the Quran that he will use as, yeah. <laughs> as a talim in the morning. And it will worry your conscience forever. So the individual you raise is also important. And then when you give your child, my first word of English that I mastered was contentment. Mm. When they give me that by 1,000 that time, so be contented. The child of Unicock in the car, learn to be contented. I will be there oh, managing that. It's important the kind of person you grow. So that when that child reaches that 18, that they think they are an adult without, uh, can live their life without your permission, it's not their dependence on you that will make them do right. Yeah. It is the quality that you have put in them that will make them do right. Yeah. Okay, so um, we are not even, because we are not even talking about the men. Because mm. it's the men that create this market. True. Mm. They are the it's customers. The men, they are the True. customers. They are the ones patronizing these girls. True. If they don't patronize these girls, they won't have markets. Be. So now, the upbringing, most times, the pressure is always on the woman. Mother. They are the one that will bring up this child. They want to talk. They are the ones to do this. Men, too, they have to come on board. Mm. Let's look for solutions to this whole thing. Communal upbringing. I think everything should resume back. Yeah. Because the way we are doing, doing our own parenting these days, mm. I don't think. Because of this social media, phone, and all of that. True, online yeah, uncles. In a hurry to, online mm. aunties. So all mm. these things, yes, so yeah. all these things are the pro the, These are all problems that... Mm. I, I like where you went to, and I'll touch on it when we get back, but let's take this call from Chief Kalu, calling from Ikeja. Good morning, Chief Kalu. Good morning. The hookup we're talking about is, uh, is a trade now, and is a commerce now and uh, by special grace of god as i'm telling you it can't stop in the sense 419 cannot stop and it cannot stop in the sense of uh, yahoo who have moved to yahoo plus cannot stop he will not stop the advice i want to advise every family train your child the way he will live and he present to you in future and also package your family where he will not bring a shame into your life. By special grace of God, you will see the good of the children moving forward. But I want to advise some people here. If a mother are very, very interested about materially things, <laughs> you will be a victim. You can't tell the children of 19 years having a phone of 2 million. You see your son coming back with the S class at the age of 24 years. I know those days you can see a trader and you know that he serves somebody as a trader and he makes so much. They said to him, or even if they don't say to him, they say, this is he can do inside the big market and make so much money. And now you see your children at the age of 24. We still like that. As a trader, you won't even buy that Benz. You will not still be managing it's yourself, it's living it's below it's your means. Cannot stop. Yeah. But I wanted to give a story. Um, Boys, really? When when they invested, yeah. there was this company yes. in a worry. I won't mention the name of the company. Mm -hmm. Um, every weekend, they will come with their bosses. They will pick these girls. These girls go as ushers. They say they are going for ushering job, right? And they have this 
um, there were like two girls in different hostels who would organize the girls mm -hmm. that would go for this What's adventure. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then when they come back, they're coming back with things. Come back. I'm just, you know, I was just telling you yeah. now that uh, they never conscripted me <laughs> for this ostrich job. Spirit, you know, just <laughs> because I needed money at the time. But nobody, I just know that we see the cars in the hostels in the evenings when they're dropping them, Sunday nights like this. Uh -uh, people are coming down with different, different things. But they never conscripted me. They never spoke to me about it. And it, w it, didn't, it didn't interest me. I, I wasn't longing to. I just saw them and we knew that that was happening. And I'm, nobody ever called out to the men. That's where I'm going to. Mm -hmm. The men are the ones who request for these special girls. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who pay yeah, this money. Yeah. They are married men who have their own wives at home. Yes. They are the ones they who pay these young adventure, girls. Adventure, fresh, the fresh blood things. The type of things they cannot do, do at the home. House. The monkey in the shadow hanging uh -huh. that they cannot uh -huh. hang at home. Uh -huh. They are looking for it. And nobody's calling them out. Now, if we want to solve this problem, what do we do about the men that's providing the market? So, you know, the hookup is, hook is an avenue that... And has become a tool that Yahoo Plus people, which is ritualists, mm. use to active, mm. achieve their goal. Wow. So, hook up in itself, you can say that that man caller said, Oh, you, you can't, uh, this person is an adult, a 25 year old. There are things that I wanted to do at 21 that if I had done it, I would regret it. Mm -hmm. There are things I wanted to do at 23 that I was feeling like I was uh -uh, old enough. No, 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 no. I am an adult. At this point in my life, I can, hmm, how I wish. They did not let me do my adult thing and allow, forced me to do what I wanted to do because I wanted to buy property. Mm -hmm. I had money for property at 20, 20, <coughs> at, when I was 23. And my parents were like, mm. I said, no, I'm not buying. I will buy later if I had bought. Mm -hmm. So there are some things that we, we, we release our children too fast. Like, oh, yeah. you're already an adult. Mbano. Now, let's talk about the fact that the hookup itself can be an adult <coughs> decision. But ritual killings have now followed hookup, which is why the police is crying out. Yeah. That it is not, their ritual killings now are not being done on innocent bystanders that was just dragged in or kidnapped. People walk into the to place their death. and walk into their death. So yeah. that's why the police is saying that hookup has now become a tool. Before people used to flag, they just do your hand like this, car will stop and carry you. Until they started using, you enter the car, they will, they will wipe out kerchief, mm -hmm. and the driver will fade. Now, if you do your hand like this, I will throw past, I will drive past. Why? We realize that what could have been an innocent flagging down a car to get a, to hit a ride has now been used by other people. It's be, the, the seemingly not so right thing has now become even more demonized. So if hookup has now become ritual killing in many places, then you should avoid hookup. Yeah, so let's take our final caller. Uh, as we wrap up the show, we have Ibrahim from Gombe. Let me let you go. Okay, yeah. so let's um, at least let's talk about solutions. Mm. Let's look at how ways that we can curb this uh, menace mm -hmm. to our society. Let's help our girls. <laughs> so first of all, I think um, let's stop shaming what they do. Maybe like, okay, so some of them want to learn how trade. to learn, you know, a trade or something. Mm -hmm. Those days, our parents fried their car on the road and they were not, you, you mm -hmm. go and buy their car. It was from the money of their car mm -hmm. that they used to send mm -hmm. some of them to, to school. school and all. So they should so be in labor. Conditions. Yes, so let learn a trade at least and, you know, be making money. Make money by the side and have money to, you know, feed your temptations and all. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, please. Parents, all of us, mothers, let's all come together. Mm. Let's start raising, let's all of us come together with all our ideas and everything and start Raise raising our children these together. Girls. Yes, let's start raising these girls. Yeah. Let's not sit down and say, ah, see this one, no. Eh, the mother did not bring her up well. No. This, this, that, that, that. It's not competition. Mm. It's not a competition. I like that. If your child is good, if, if the child will be good to another person. Mm. Like, for example, now I'm bringing up my child. My child goes to school, he's meeting another child. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. So, you know, they can. You know, they can influence even your child that you brought up well. So let's all come together and see how we can, you know, get solutions to all these things. Yeah. You know? Please let's listen more to our girls. If they mm. are, com if they complain about something, they come to us. They want this. They want that. Mm. Let's try as, as parents. Let's try to get those things for them. Mm. Not everything. Give them so the basics. Let's basically, just make sure that they have those things yeah. that you know. Basics. Yeah. Then I also learned, learned something from what you, you know two of you said earlier about community raising, mm. which is uh, sometimes because we are the parents to the children, 
we have blind spots. We don't see some of their flaws because, you know, it's all when you look at your child, it's all love that you see. And Enima can just look at the child and point out, mm -mm, I've noticed this about the child. How do we take it? We need mm. to start listening. We need to understand that she's not pointing it out because she doesn't like me or she doesn't like the child. Mm. She wants the child to be better. I can also point out something I noticed with her child. Let's, let's find a way to love ourselves as one and then we can all contribute to the growth so if you see any child who's doing something bad you can call out and you said that you are the parents receiving the call out she understand that it's not from a malicious place it's just because sure. we want this child to be better and you know by the grace of god we'll see how that mm. goes then one thing i wanted to add before i run off quickly is we you know there was a guest we had on the show some time back and she was saying that we glamour glamorize success so much mm. that everybody has an idea of how to look when you're successful mm. we don't show the grits we don't show the endurance we don't show the perseverance we don't show the long suffering that we go through to get to where we are we need to start telling those stories we need to start showing that it's actually hard work i've not slept well in days because i want to achieve this this and that and let people just have a holistic view of what it takes to be successful and by the grace of god <laughs> the rest is our the scorecard yes. <laughs> will come soon <laughs> as the children grow yes. all right that's all we can take on this segment when we come back we move on to our let's talk stay with us Stay tuned. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Gentlemen, now member queen of the eighties, non conformist. Afrobeat historian in her right and long standing member of the multiple award winning all female show, your view, Omoyeni, Yeni, and if we like for Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger! Today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Huh. Hmm. I know, I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah! Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said 75. But I wasn't even born in 75. Damn. So, will I drink out? Eh? You go drink out. Take, 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 take. Make a, make a help you. Rush and rush and rush and. No, be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Lights in, you know. Nepa, Nepa Road. Ah! <laughs> Nepa Road. Nepa Road. In Avel Kuta. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah hey omi omo fella omi omo anikula kpokuti. Oh no, baby, can you kick it? It's my other song, it's not my other song. Ladies and gentlemen, we can make time stand still forever. Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good, I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, I mean. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you, thank you. Now my question. Which I feel is a cheap question. Well, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? 
That is it. I think I'll drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Clear your mind. No. Say you didn't want me. me. You're me now. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym means. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy. You know. <laughs> hmm. you know very, very, it's, out there. it's supposed to be, yeah. I just said, let's make I give you this one as a token of my appreciation. Sony. Drink! No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there. You did not, you, you did not say final answer. Final answer. You, did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you know, how, many, how many cameras do they have? I went to drink. I gave you a very easy something. Nikon now. Yeah. K2 Lagos. Telephone 0708-066-8003 or 0708-066-8004. You can also log on to www.tvccommunications.tv. Ramadan Kari. Thanks for staying with us. One of Nigeria's most underutilized sectors is the informal sector. And joining us on the show this morning is a social commentator and public affairs analyst. He will be discussing how we can harness the informal sector for our nation's economic development, wealth creation for many of its populace, jobs, and other employment opportunities and benefits, how to create wealth, and how to start and maintain a formidable business. Welcome with us. Mr. Victor Kahlo. Thank you. Thank you very Good much. Morning, Good morning. Sir. It seemed like you wanted to jump into the, former, the other conversation <laughs> we're having. Well, it, it's, it's, it's connected actually to the, to the informal sector. Okay, let's hear you. Uh, because the majority of uh, Nigerians work in the informal sector. Uh, I started my career in the FMCG sector. And I was, when, I, when I joined this company, I, I wanted to be posted. FMCG is fast moving consumer goods. I was selling relaxer. Okay. I, was, I wanted to be posted to, to the town to sell, but I was sent to trade fair. When I got to trade fair, I saw. Business 101. <laughs> I saw young Igbo boys that were selling products, they were selling articles, and they were in serious money, not mm. small money. And most of these guys are not even fully what you call documented enterprises, but they were doing billions. They were importing, they were selling, they were distributing to not only Nigeria, to West Africa. And they were making a lot of money. Most of those guys are less than 25 years of age. Most of those Igbo guys. Mm. So, uh, sorry to not align with you. Someone that is 25 years of age can actually make billions of naira in this country. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the informal sector is a huge opportunity. Everybody talks about it, but are we really harnessing it in the country? Yeah. What does the informal sector cover? 
So the informal sector is that sector of the economy, the productive sector that is not uh, registered with CAC, that is not regulated uh, by any agency of government, and you know that their business is not really structured as well. Their business are not, is not structured. Maybe they don't have. Uh, some of them, uh, for instance, I talked about trade fair. They have a shop in the market, but they are not well. You know, the, the, major, the major denominator is that they are not registered with CAC and they are not properly <coughs> regulated. Okay. So, um, the interesting part about the informal sector is, uh, and I've been wondering how, when you say, when the commission is around how, how Nigeria can address the informal sector, because the informal sector is thriving on its own. Is, is it, do we really need to harness it? Can we not just let them be doing their own? Because by the time governments took hand inside something, the next thing they yeah, now say yeah. they want to start taxing. They, they, this is the amount of money here. Let us enter it, and we might end up having it being it unraveled right yeah. in front of us. What could be an advantage? It's not just better we just leave it as it is. So that's a good question, but it, I'll, I'll give you uh, certain numbers. Nigeria's budget, Nigeria's GDP, 10% mm. of Nigeria's GDP, mm comes from when they came into uh, office, they are readjusted our unemployment numbers to say that more Nigerians are employed that people usually say because 80% 80, 80 of Nigeria's employment uh, is generated from the informal sector. Okay, and also Nigeria's budget as it is today only about 10% of it comes from internally generated revenue from taxes. Mm. So the GDP, uh, 37 trillion naira of GDP generated by the informal sector does not get into government revenue to fund That's development cool. in the country. So the government goes about looking for uh, money to borrow to fund its budget, mm -hmm. whereas it's generating 37 on tax untaxed revenue from the informal sector. So if you say the informal sector should be left alone, you know, how will the country develop when the, uh, the federal government is not generating any form of revenue from them? From the informal sector, they are thriving. And also, the informal sector actually does not know its potential. So I, I'm going to tell you this. So uh, my company has business with the informal sector. There is this woman, I'll tell you a case in point. This woman sells bole and she has six children. Her husband abandons her and runs away because of economic challenge. So she was really crying and she was suicidal. So when one of our staff met her, she said, I said, Bole, I don't have anything, I want to die. The woman said, but you have something, you're selling Bole. She said, what is Bole? To cut a long story short, they got her to start saving 2,000 naira from her Bole. Daily. Daily. Within three months, this woman had over 300,000 naira saved. She moved from, she moved from, uh, from selling bole on the road. She bought more equipment, rented a small shop, and she's moving. The person, mechanics are in the informal sector. Mm. Okay. Make, a mechanic can repair three, four vehicles in a day. Yeah. And he makes 10,000 naira each, and that's 40,000 naira multiplied by 30 days. That's over mm. a million. Mm. But a typical mechanic will have... A, a, a wife in the hospital give birth, he cannot afford to okay. pay for the hospital mm. bills. But if you check the wealth that they are generating, it is enormous. So, which, 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 should they be left alone for not being able to harness their wealth? Mm. Then the, 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 the major point also is the value addition from the government and from the, uh, from the society to the informal sector. People that work in a uh, normal office environment, you realize that even as a broadcaster, maybe after two, three years, you go for training mm -hmm. to upgrade your skill. You want to do better. You want to be better in broadcasting. You want to do better. But people in the informal sector never, there is no formal training to upgrade their skills. Mm. Things as little as um, laying of tiles, Nigerians are importing experts to do that. To do that now. Yeah. Because the person uh, doing the uh, uh, tile Papa Jimo. will mm -hmm. stay forever. No skill upgrade, mm. no, no form of training. Mm. He is just continuing that way. So, so that's the yeah, so, yeah, so the, the informal sector 
should actually be, it's actually the backbone of the Nigerian economy. Mm -hmm. I've thought about the potential. 63% of Nigeria's budget is borrowed, yet only 10% of our GDP is taxed. 80% mm -hmm. wow. of our revenue comes from the informal sector. So if we can just let the informal sector contribute to the development of this country, we will not have to borrow. So from outside? Yes. Okay. But the informal sector, I'll, I'll delve into that, if you, if you permit me, maybe I should leave it, maybe I'm going to ask the, the we question. We have more questions. We have more questions. Yeah, so the informal <laughs> sector is like an elephant that is in a room that has all this big potential. You ask yourself, why is government only able to tax 10%? Banks, are not a, CBN has talked about financial inclusion. How many people, how many people from the informal sector have been uh, onboarded? I came from the telecom uh, sector. I was divisional manager for uh, Globalcom. I was different positions. And one of the key challenges we face is how do we even register a SIM card to the woman on the street in the market? I was reading an article this morning. A guy launched a pension for the informal sector. The business crashed. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how even all these people can harness the informal sector. He could not penetrate the informal sector because there is one missing link. Even President Tunumbu, when he came in, he launched VAT collection. I was in a hotel. One of my friends, who's a lawyer, was consulting for them. So we went to a hotel where they were having this meeting to collect VAT because he has a vision to increase internal generator revenue through revenue. tax through VAT. They called the informal sector, the Association of Market Women, to collect VAT. Oh, yeah, collect the VAT now. <laughs> there is something that is missing. I'm going to share... That thing that is missing. Okay, hold on. We'll so come, I'm gonna, we'll I'm gonna to that. To that. Yes, thank so you. Ready to go. Okay, yes. so <laughs> thank you. You're the guest for today, honestly. Because our earlier topic was, you know, about you know better options mm -hmm. and getting and how money to, yeah. that gives dignity. And I like that you you brought it because uh, I live near the trade fair. I see these two people yes. and how boys, big boys. Mm -hmm. how they Imagine most of them not not taxed. Yes, most of them are not. They are wealthy. Taxed. Yeah. yeah. But in Lagos State, I don't know about other states, Lagos State has been able to do what they call the artisan association. Mm -hmm. So I remember the Taylor's Association, they do their meetings in my old office, my old yeah. law firm building. Yeah, they do. So they do that and they have a way they are taxed. Yeah. But I think the, the local government and the state government the continuously government. have this clash. Mm -hmm. But each of them are made to pay through the artisan group that they belong. Yes. So Taylor groups... They they gather it. and go. Yeah. And when go, any benefit is coming to them, they come to them as a body. So they, the Egbe not finish it. The robot thing called the Egbe mm -hmm. Association. And they do it like that. But now that you're talking how to get it, mm -hmm. I think they have the grounds already. They can go from there. I would like you to talk about, you see these boys mm -hmm. that we are talking about. When we, government issue comes up, how Nigerians should take ownership we will not start the conversation. That's where I hear the conversation most about what government has not done for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the trade fair is a complex government has created where you make money. Some people don't need shop. They go there. Mm -hmm. You want to buy yeah, something, inside. Robert, and get them. Yes. You, you don't get them. <laughs> you don't go inside. Go, go and them. Shop. You know, And they do these businesses. But they don't agree. There's a sentiment of the mindset towards taxes mm -hmm. as that an average That's Nigerian has. Mm -hmm. When it's time to pay something, <laughs> ah, yeah, they are has not done anything for me. Yeah, so address, I want you to address that and how the mindset Okay, can so, so, I mean, I, I mean I, I, my company also collects tax for a state government. I don't want to uh, mention, mention the state, but we collect taxes for them, and uh, I get asked this question in the field. And my, my, my question, I'll, 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 I'll address the reason why you, the informal sector, should rush to be a part of the being tax, okay? I will, uh, my, my question to you, first of all, is this. You have a shop. Someone drives from his house to your shop to buy product from you. You did not build that road. Government builds it. Without the road, you will not sell drive. your business. Secondly, you sell, after you are done with selling, you make 100,000, you're able to carry that money to the bank or to your house without someone coming to point a gun in your face or collect it from you. It's government that provides opportunity for us not to do that. But I will then address the very critical reason why uh, it's important that everybody pays tax. There is a, there is a widespread syndrome now, people, uh, that is called JAPA. Mm. 
So people say, ah, I'm jackpot. And when they jackpot to the jackpot to the, to the Americas and the Europe, they, they, are, doing, they, are, no, they are doing better. Mm -hmm. They are doing better. Let's leave. The, they, they are doing better. Why are they doing better? This, so what, you're, what are you going to do in the country you're jackpotting? Two things. If you're not going to do drugs and all that, you're going to either get a job mm -hmm. or you're going to start a business. So why is the same business you're doing in Nigeria succeeding better there? Because I've gone to business school. What you're taught in business school is that the factors that lead to the success of your business, 90% of it is external factor. Mm -hmm. the, the small business that are crying now that the currency has gone up, why are you go and perform your magic in your business? Why are you crying? The inflation has gone up. You are crying. But you feel that the success of your business depends on your strength as an entrepreneur. It is not so. Mm -hmm. The external environment contributes 90% of your business success. Mm -hmm. And what will help you as a business owner to have this external environment, the electricity, the good road, the microeconomic conditions to be better for you mm -hmm. as an informal sector, uh, uh, trader or business owner is the ability for government to fund this critical infrastructure. Nigeria's budget today is about 30, 37 trillion naira. South Africa, I use, I use dollars, so it, because I use dollar, dollar, dollar per dollar. Nigeria's budget is about 20.4 20 billion dollars. South Africa is 125 billion dollars. Now, out of this Nigeria's 20 billion, only 9.8 billion comes from revenue. All of the other ones are borrowed. South Africa, the revenue from, from the government to fund that 125 billion dollars, 120 billion dollars comes from revenue from the, from, from the government. If you want to buy a train, how much does train cost? Some states' internal generated revenue is 50 billion naira. How much does a train cost? <laughs> so the government needs money to be able to fund what we want. And the good thing is that we have the, uh, the resources, the informal sector, to give us this revenue. As I said earlier when I was started, most of the informal sector does not even know how much money generates. Yeah. Most of our GDP, like yeah. most of our GDP does not account for a lot of the money coming from the informal sector. Because most of those money don't even make it to the bank. They are hidden under the bed and all that. So, so shop, the, the informal... 400 billion yes. bond yes. shop. So, so as, uh, okay, so now I'll go to the reason why you, as an informal sector person, needs to run. I would like her to okay. get a question in because we're okay. wrapping up. Are you okay. ready? Okay, no, I wanted to ask him to list the informal sectors, but as he was talking, he was really mentioning them. Some of them. Yeah, so... So, this hookup we talked about before you joined the show, is it part of the informal sector? Ah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think they should be taxed? No, it's a question. Well, uh, I, I believe uh, hookup, for what I understand, is illegal in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's illegal. So anything that is illegal... How is it illegal? But it's selling, selling, illegal. Mm -hmm. selling your, your body. Yes, yes, yeah, it's, it's, illegal. it's illegal. And police can arrest you and you can actually go mm -hmm. to jail. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that solicitation okay. is mm -hmm. illegal. If you stand in your car and you're soliciting for... Um, X yes, you will, you will. That's why they pick up those girls. Yes, on the street. They will. don't pick the it, boys. It, that's it, 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 no, you can actually because boys can say anything. You can actually be also uh, picked up. So it's illegal in Nigeria. Okay. So, but I want to I want to talk about the what holds. I say it's an elephant. That if uh, all these people are filled in the informal sector. Why are we not succeeding in the Yes, sector? you said you are going to hold something. Yes. Please release it before you show. So, <laughs> so that thing is. And I was a visionary manager for data for Glow. What we are missing is data okay. of the informal sector. Mm -hmm. For instance, if a bank wants to register, Do we have enough data for the formal sector. First we, of yes, we, that's not we, don't have. We, 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 we have pretty much enough data. For instance, if you want to onboard, open an account for an informal sector person, you need BVN, you need NIN. Mm. Ninety percent of them don't have it. Even the one we do, you need phone number. To register someone in the, in the market, he or she does not have phone. You cannot collect taxes without this. You cannot open an account for them. You cannot enroll them uh, in a pension mm -hmm. without NIN, without BVN. So what we are trying to do is ensure that everybody in the informal sector has access to this data. And also they have access to technology. So I want to, I want to also say that one of the, so I want to talk about the problems of this informal sector briefly. The informal sector 
get credit at a very high cost. And that's why they are not doing well. More, uh, higher cost than the formal sector. A, a, a big boy that's running a big business will go to the bank and get a loan at, say, 20% interest per annum. That's still a lot. Yes, but the guy that is selling food on the road, the formal sector will go to a microfinance bank or to the people that do, say, collect. 3% per, per, per month. No. It's, 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 you're getting at a, at a good price at then. Per annum is more than 60% yeah. interest per annum. 60%. How? And they'll pay. Yes. How can the human sector person thrive this way? Access to cheap credits helps businesses grow. Access to very expensive credits is suffocating the yes. informal sector. Yeah. I talked about training. I talked about data. We want to create uh, an ability for everybody in the informal sector to have access to the right connection to consume all these things for government to even be able to get revenue for them through data, NIN, BVN, for everybody in the information, and also the education and the skill upgrade. I believe that the government can set up a, a, a unit, you know, a, a commission for the informal sector economy mm. that will be focused on their empowerment access to cheap credit that are focused on the data if every if 160 million nigerians in the informal sector have access to bvn and nin the banking sector will experience the i thought everybody day. already has nin now because they made it composite for you to get your phone i i was i was when a uh, nim sister i was i was i, I was uh, part of the head of the committee in the, in the entire ecosystem to drive NIN. I don't know the figures, but as at, as at last year, it was still hovering around 50 something percent, even less. Oh. Okay. NIN. People are. Let me, let me just ask you this question because the, agri, fa, the agri is, uh, fa, uh, farmers are fall under the informal sector. They mm. got loan and they did not pay back the loan. Anchor borrower, mm. all the, the financial rest. intervention that they provided for the Greek sector. So uh, it depends on how th those loans, I don't know the details of those loans, because I know that part of these loans are given, at, given to in associations, mm. in groups, okay? So that uh, they have a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, monitoring, and uh, so I don't know the details. People, everybody, people from the formal sector, from the informal sector default on loans. Mm. So I may not be able to comment on that particular case. That's what happened. Yes. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with a data analyst, Victor Kahlo. He has <laughs> broken down the informal sector and how the government can you know, wade in to come back. and harness. Yes, mm -hmm. we need to have like a full day with you. So you mm -hmm. really break it down and how... We also, in the informal sector, can take advantage of what the government has to offer mm -hmm. as well and you know, scale up. It's very painful that some of the trades we knew growing up, where this one is papa mechanic or uh, carpenter or the, furnish, uh, they furniture maker, the they die and then none of their children takes up the business and we're Absolutely. importing people Absolutely. to do that business. Absolutely. Imagine if they had scaled up, lands upgraded you know, and extended the business. Absolutely. We have businesses that run for hundreds of years in Nigeria. We don't have that. Uh, uh, elsewhere, yes, we have. Yeah, yes, we have yes. outside. Yes. But that's all we can take on this show today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye now. Thank you.